guys welcome back to my channel today I'm filming another will I buy it video now these videos are inspired by Samantha March who got the idea from Kimberly Clark who if you haven't seen it she has an awesome series called what I'm not gonna buy and will I buy it are kind of like a weekly video that Samantha March does and she just talks about new makeup launches and whether she's gonna pick them up or not so I thought it was a fun idea I think it's a great way to talk yourself out of buying things that you probably don't need or already have something in your collection that can make it work. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to sit down and film this, so if you guys are interested, just keep watching. So what I like to do is just go on trend mood and then just go through everything. Um, first picture on here that I'm seeing is called the Club Hot Box, and this is looking like it's the new Melt collection that's coming out for the summertime. Now I have one of the Melt stacks, um, I think I have, I don't have the Rust stack, I have, I have one of those stacks that I really didn't like it and I thought it was like really really expensive for the price. So I'm not really planning on trying anything out by Melt Cosmetics anytime soon. Next thing I'm seeing is the LC, the Hydra Enhancer and I believe this is a setting spray or like a facial mist that they're coming out with. The bottle is really beautiful and it's very luxurious looking. Now I recently reviewed um, a couple of items from LC Cosmetics. I will go ahead and link it up in the cards. Um, it's a really, really nice brand for the most part. I think their products are a little high priced and they don't do free shipping unless you spend like $75. So that usually determines whether I'm going to shop on your website, to be honest. And um, so, yeah, I don't think I'll be purchasing that. And um, it doesn't look like you're getting a ton of product. So I'm going to be skipping that. I'm so sick of all the Huda Beauty, like, launches, especially, like, the lips. Like, nobody... Is the metallic trend really a trend? Like, it's so... I mean, like, who can pull off a metal like a me metallic lipstick like unless you're going to a rave you're really not gonna wear a metallic lipstick and so I just like don't understand why it's a thing I wish it wasn't a thing but it's like really a thing and people just keep coming out with more and more metallic lipsticks so I would just like for us to put the kibosh on the metallic trend I just don't think it's wearable I would much rather have like a thousand nudes than metallic lips um, another collection that's coming out pretty soon is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Summer Collection. I believe this is launching June 24th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. He did do a um, like an announcement video last week, or was it this week, or some sometime? And um, I don't know. I think I'm Jeffree Starred out. I have a lot of his liquid lipsticks. I just bought the Manny collab. As you can see, it's back there. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't really need anything else from him, so I don't really know that I'm going to pick up anything else from Jeffree Star Cosmetics in the near future. This, I thought, was like the joke of the century. Kim Kardashian West uh, collection or like her makeup launch that's all of a sudden just like a whole brand is dropping on 621.17. Um, I feel like the whole Kardashian beauty line that they have, do they still have that at Ulta? I don't even know was so awful and now it's like you know there it's is it like they're seeing Kylie make all this money so now they're trying to get on the gravy train like I I don't know like you know is is Kim Kardashian like known for doing her own makeup no all her makeup's done by makeup artists so sometimes I always wonder with like those celebrity collabs because even with the Becca Chrissy Teigen collab I watched a lot of like her like um, like Instagram posts from her party and she just kept saying like I don't even know what to make like do with makeup and like her makeup artist was there and she's like she's the one that does my makeup and she's just always using this palette on me and I just wanted to make it so easy for women and I was just like do you obviously you don't do your own makeup doesn't even seem like you know much about makeup are you really the person that should be collabing with a makeup brand to make a makeup product you know like I understood Actually, there's really not a lot of celebrities that I understand that come up with makeup lines unless they're genuinely interested in makeup, you know? That's that's what I don't understand. Like, I maybe understood, like, Urban Decay and Gwen Stefani because Gwen Stefani is, like, iconic when it comes to her makeup, like, especially from the No Doubt days. But it's, like, I don't understand celebrities that have, like, makeup lines 
and like are into like makeup or in the makeup scene but they don't do their own makeup so what's the point it's just a famous space to sell the product i guess um, these lancome juicy shakers are a hard pass i have a video i will link it up in the cards it was um when i tried the other juicy shaker crap they came out with last summer um totally don't think you need it super overpriced lime crime mermaid dream mermaid collection highlighter thing i own one thing from lime crime and i just got rid of it i had the venus palette that was so like a thing when um i first started watching youtube like lime crime was such a hyped up brand um that i bought their palette on um hot look because lime crime is sometimes on hot look but i didn't like the formula i thought it was really shitty Packaging was really pretty, but I'll never buy Lime Crime again. Um, also, what's up with the um, makeup previews? Like, MAC showing Whisper of Guilt coming out for the holidays. Like, it's June. Relax. Like, I get the holidays are six months away, but this is, like, a little excessive with the sneak peeks. I actually watched uh, Makeup Struggles. I'm going to pop her video up in the cards. Um, she did a whole video about collabs and like how brands need to like get it together when it comes with collabs and like she was talking about like the sneak peeks and how like sneak peeks are coming up like six months in advance and you literally forget that something is launching um, because they sneak peek it so far in advance and it's like come on guys we all went to school for marketing like it's not that complicated you don't start hyping up a product six months before somebody can get their hands on it nobody is that dedicated okay ain't nobody got time but i'm not gonna lie i do have whisper of guilt it came out super super in limited edition last year's holiday collection but this packaging though like what are they trying to do i don't need eight of the same highlighter okay come out with something new stop it um physicians formula i really don't like to support that brand because um they don't cater to my skin tone um and i think that's really messed up um, like why can't they make stuff for darker skin tones? Everything is geared towards lighter skin tones. Um, and they're like a very mainstream brand. Like even the butter bronzer. It's like, do you not think that I want a bronzer that smells like coconut? Because I fucking do. So like make that shit for darker skin tones. I'm not even that dark. Uh, looks like a new YSL foundation that's launching. Um, don't care. Um, this BH Cosmetics Solar Flare palette it looks pretty but it kind of reminds me of the naked heat palette and i already have that coming my way so i will not be getting that um some sneak peeks more sneak peeks of the Too face nobody gives a crap smelly peach crap and i just i won't buy Too face guys i almost bought the glitter bomb palette i was like <sighs> and then i was like you know what karen you have the urban decay moon dash shadows you don't need the glitter bomb palette so that brought me back down to earth pretty quick. The only thing I really love that Too Faced makes is the Born This Way foundation. Other than that, it's like, mm, I don't need any of it. And I just, the drama and their products and the, I just don't know. Uh, don't need this, the Marble Beauty Blender. Like, for what? For what does anybody need a Marble Beauty Blender for? I have found so many amazing drugstore sponges. Like, I was on the Beauty Blender train, I was like, mm, Beauty Blender is the best, but that's not true. Eco Tools, the Real Techniques sponge, I've been trying out the Flower Beauty sponge. That one's a little too soft for my liking, but it's still good, it still gets the job done. Don't need a $20 sponge that looks like this, okay? It looks dirty. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just don't want it. I just don't want it. Here's a Brazilian Crush uh, Body Mist fragrance. Um, this is for the travel size of this. It already is like out on Sephora.com, the full size. I'm so intrigued by this whole Brazilian bum bum cream. Like everyone and their mom like hauled it um, during the Sephora VIB sale. And I tried a sample. I got a free sample like back in the day and I thought it was really good. But it's not like $45 good for something that smells like coconut. Like no thank you. Not today. Okay, so then the whole Jaclyn Hill palette, um, so much drama with this palette. If you guys haven't been um, checking out, you know, social media and people freaking out and stuff like that. Um, honestly, do I want to spend $38 on this palette? No. 
but as somebody on YouTube, am I gonna be trying to get my hands on this palette? Yes. Like, I don't want to support Morphe, like, and all their, like, foolery and tricks and shit, but uh, I do still like Jaclyn Hill, and for the most part, I mean, if this palette sucks, I'm probably never buying anything from her again. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just think it's like a good all-around palette. There's neutrals. There's a bit of color. I think it's gonna be a. I, I think it's gonna be a good palette. I mean, she spent two years on the damn thing. It better like do your laundry and wash the dishes all in one fail swoop, if you know what I mean. So excited for this. This is on its way to me. This is the Zulu palette by Juvia's Place. You guys know I am die hard for Juvia's Place. They have not let me down yet. And of course, the Sunset Palette by Natasha Denona. It was limited edition, but guess what? She's making it permanent because of course, all of you, all of you asked her to make it permanent. So that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna make it permanent and you're always and forever gonna be able to get your hands on the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. I'm gonna skip the Jouer glosses. I was really into Jouer for a while, and then they did the whole skinny dip collection, and that looked really amazing, like the palette looked really amazing. But I was like, you know what? I don't need to spend $45 for seven glittery eyeshadows. I have like 800 of those same shades. Like, just didn't need it. I just thought it was so gimmicky, so I passed on that. Um, but I do really like their lip crims. Here's a big one, the Kylie Summer Collection. Now... I'm not gonna lie, this is speaking to me on a spiritual level. It's a little shocking because most of Kylie's stuff is like, seriously? But then I posted a picture on my Instagram, you guys should follow me on Instagram if you don't, it's Karen Harris Makeup, of the Kylie palette versus that Cargo Aloha palette. Uh, if you guys don't know the brand Cargo, it's a thing. I don't really own a lot of stuff from them, but I have heard of them. They used to be sold. Are they still sold at Ulta? Yeah, they're still sold at Ulta. You can't get the Aloha palette anymore. I was going to order it to compare it to the Kylie palette, but I couldn't get it on the Ulta website, so that was kind of weird. But uh, those palettes look very similar, and like some people were like, Oh my god, they don't even look the same, like maybe two or three colors, and I was like, I'm just talking about the aesthetic overall, they looked very similar, okay, I'm not saying don't buy one or the other, I'm just saying they look pretty similar. So, let me know if you guys are buying the new Kylie collection, I kind of really want the eyeshadow palette, I'm, I'm curious because she also said it's a new formula, so that'll be intriguing. The new ABH Summer Collection is available online at Sephora now, and uh, these are their new blushes. I'm actually not a blush person, guys, so I'm going to be passing on that. I just don't need blush. It's just not something that interests me on a daily basis. Um, what else do we have? Ooh, this I did actually pick up the shadow palette because... You guys, I'm a sucker for Beauty and the Beast, so I figured I would give Lorac one more chance. One more chance. Wow me. Um, and so I did pick up the eyeshadow palette from the Beauty and the Beast collection that they did. Um, then um, Bomb Cosmetics' new nude beach palette. I just didn't like the um, Mad About You palette, or one of those like matte palettes that are named after like matte matte nude, matte gray, whatever. Um, I really didn't like the consistency of that palette, so I don't like the Bomb Cosmetics. The only thing I have from them is uh, some of the luminizers, and uh, I just, I just, I just won't be buying this palette. I think it's like so like behind the trends, you know? This one is on its way to me. I had to, I had to do it, the Naked Heat palette. I'm just such a fan of like the Naked palette, the first one, that was like my OG palette. So when I saw the Naked Heat palette, I was like, give it to me now, like shut the front door. Um, because the Smoky palette, which is the last one that came out, really sucked. And I never bought the second one, the third one, the Rose Gold palette, um, just never worked with my skin tone. So I feel like the Naked Heat palette is going to be the one that's going to pop on medium to deep skin tone, so girl, you better get it, you better get that money and buy yourself the Naked Heat palette. I don't know, I don't know, I will review it for you guys, but I I bought it because I wanted it, 
Like, um, why? More metallic lipsticks. Nobody wants fucking me metallic lipstick. These are by Makeup Forever. Um, Zoeva um, Cosmetics is coming out with a line called uh, Offline, I think. I don't know. It looks like that. I have a few Zoeva palettes that I've been meaning to try out. I just, I have so many palettes I need to, like, play with, so I haven't gotten around to it. Here's another sneak peek. Like, fuck off, Marc Jacobs. It's June. Like, we don't need sneak peeks of your holiday collections. Like, fuck off. Like, I can't even keep up with what's going on with my life right now. I don't need you to be sneak peeking something six months in advance. The Hangover, um... 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. I'm not getting this. I swear to God, guys, I own the Hangover Primer. It is the most overhyped primer in the world. Like, Kathleen Lights talks about it. There's a few other YouTubers that love that primer, and I just don't understand the hype. So I'm not going to get the primer spray either. I just bought this um, guy. It's not new, but this is the Carly Bible Palette. I feel more comfortable buying something knowing that I can return it if I don't like it. Um, I didn't like the first Carly Bible palette, so I don't think I'm going to like this one either. But if I do like it, I'll keep it. And if I don't like it, I'm sending it back. Oh, there's also the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette. I'm just, I'm kind of over Kat Von D. Um, I have that uh, matte, what is it, like the matte and the shimmer palette. What is it called? It was like that beast of a palette that came out over the holidays. Metal Matte Palette. And I never use it. And I just feel like there's enough like eyeshadow for me there. Like for the rest of my life. So I'm not buying anything else Kat Von D. This was the biggest joke of the century to me. The Jaclyn Hill um, Champagne Pop Shimmering Skin Perfector Limited Edition. Like Anniversary Edition Champagne Pop. Was such a joke. Because first of all... The the shade's only been around for two years. That's not a reason to create a collector's edition of anything. Okay, two years is like a, a like a short-term relationship for some people. Like, I don't understand. Two years is not a long time. And I don't think it... Like, why? It's like Becca was just trying to squeeze one little... One last drop of milk from the cow, you know? Before it was just like... Couldn't they wait until it was five years? Like, five years is a solid amount of success where you needed to create a collector's edition. But two years? Like, mm, and you didn't even have very good luck with those, like, palettes, you know? It's like, what are they celebrating? I'm so confused. That launch was half a mess for Becca. And then it was like, Champagne Pop was like, super limited edition. Then they bought it back in permanent. Now they're bringing Prosecco Pop, which she said was going to be limited edition is now permanent. So that whole Becca Jacqueline Hill thing is such a joke to me. Luckily, the Champagne Pop highlight is popping, so I'm going to keep buying it, but I have it in a full size and the Jacqueline Hill face palette, so I'm not going to need Champagne Pop until I die. And if you already have it, you don't need the collector's edition. Two years is not worthy of a celebration. I'm just letting you guys know that, okay? It's just Becca trying to milk the cow. <laughs> Okay, I need to stop talking, so I need to get off this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have any opinions, definitely leave me a comment down below. I would love to talk to you guys about any of these products and launches. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys.